Welcome to my hometown of Temecula and our family cooking program called Cooking and Kids. Despite its name, today's episode is actually geared towards more adult audience. I have somebody very special I want to introduce to you and also unveil one of these secret recipes. But before we get to kitchen and cooking, I want to take you on a little adventure and show you around my hometown. Besides its wine country and acclaimed wines, Temecula is also known for its stunning sunrises and breathtaking sunsets. And wherever you find a good glass of wine, chances are you're going to find good food. And wherever you find good food, chances are you're going to find good people. And this episode is all about them. Southern California is known for its unique climate. Abundance of sun and rich soil makes some of us obsessed with growing things, wines in particular. But there is more to this land than just its sweet fruit. Like any beautiful day, this episode too should start with a beautiful sunrise. We are going to do this in style. And what would be better but to take a hot air balloon ride? The process of lifting one is quite intriguing. It takes a team of four to five well-trained and well-coordinated members to make sure that inflating and launching a balloon goes safely. During early morning hours, you can sometimes see over 20 balloons above Temecula's wine country. Temecula is so fond of its hot air balloons, it created a special festival to celebrate them. Thus, each year, first week in June, we celebrate Hot Air Balloon and Wine Festival. This is such a great experience and can be a wonderful family activity. And off we go! All the balloons are launched early in the morning while the air is still very calm. Prior to becoming famous for its vine and vineyards, Temecula's agriculture was focused on citrus. Most of these orchards are now being replaced by vineyards. It looks like we are not the only ones anticipating sunrise this morning. And the timing couldn't be better. As soon as we were up, sun started to rise. With beautiful Glen Oak Hills community to the east and the Lake Skinner to the north and vast vineyards below, Temecula is a true jewel. This flight wouldn't be complete if I didn't take you over the oldest commercial vineyard in Temecula, established by Callaway family in 1970s. <laughs> Best way to conclude this morning's flight was with the taste of a local champagne. Not a bad way to start the day. 
It's time to get back to our chefs. My two assistants and Joe. Yes, oh. our wonderful host. I have two assistants Joe. tonight. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This is going to be a good dinner, I can tell already. <laughs> On the menu tonight is almost everything that you could find at the seafood store. On the menu today is a real Spanish paella. And while the chef David is cleaning seafood, our sous chef Martha is preparing vegetables for the base. And then there is our dear host, Mr. Joe, who's making sure that everybody stays in a good mood. All right, well, here's the paella that we're going to be making today. It's all seafood, nothing else but seafood. So Joe wanted to uh, basically put everything out in the sea. So we almost did. <laughs> we have lobster tails here, okay. We have salmon, scallops, <laughs> clams, mussels, shrimp, and calamari on you know calamari rings. The assortment of vegetables as well. Yeah, the, the vegetables are gonna be this is what's gonna we can create what's called the base. That's the basis for any any good meal. So it's gonna have onions, garlic, which is out there. We have uh, green pepper, red pepper, yellow pepper. And then the ones that, is, that are striped basically more for garnishment, so it looks nice at the end of the thing. Oh, and the main good. ingredient, the star of the show, is saffron. It's one of the most expensive spices that, well, actually is the, the most expensive spice out there. Well, they recommend uh, arroz bomba, which is the really the rice that's used for paella, but here it's a little hard to get a hold of. But our butter rice is it's an equal, it's, 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 still, it's a very short grain and very, very fat rice that absorbs a lot of liquid. Okay, this also is used for risotto, which is I also can make, it's a pretty good risotto. So this is really the star of the show, along with everything else, the, the rice, we and have smoked paprika, which is going to give it the smoky flavor. And then, as um, Martha was saying, this is just a basically the spices yet, from Spain that's going to give it that nice flavor. I think we're gonna um, you know, tomato that we're going to be so using, I'll clam, juice, and minced clams just to... You know, embellish the flavor, I guess. Okay. But we are not starting to cook until the proper prep work is done. And the mood and the atmosphere are at their absolute Cheers. perfect. It was a wonderful evening with wonderful friends. I never made a paella before, so the lesson number one was to get the right dish and make sure your oil is well preheated. The next step is to pre-cook a really rich vegetable base for the rice. And we are starting with onions and salt first. Do you have enough stock for sure? Yeah, we should. Uh, with onions lightly cooked, we're gonna add mixed chopped peppers. Together with onions, peppers will create this rich, fragrant base. While Chef Dave is busy with uh, preparing the base, sous chef Martha is making sure that lobsters are well buttered. You know, at the end of the day, it's memories, you know? Um, well, what, what else do we take with us? We don't take lobsters. A little salt and pepper on a seafood prior to cooking, and then we are adding garlic to our base. And now we're cooking. Like Latin music, the Latin dishes have a warm and fragrant melody to it. You go. Well, this needs to turn into more of a paste, uh, a little paste, and that's consistency, right? A pasty consistency. And I think Martha. Oh, okay, so you will fry the rice first yep. and then add the broth, hot broth to it. Yep. Very good, okay. Hey Martha, yeah. say Simon says sex begins at 60. Simon says 60, 60, 60. <laughs> <laughs> Let's put just a little bit more on this one. Apparently, it's very important to allow rice to absorb all these wonderful flavors before adding a white high, wine. A little higher. Because we're going to be putting, we're going to, we want to, is it all high? So, white wine, correct? White wine. Okay. Do you need more wine? Not to be enough. 
I got some wine in here now, it's just enough for the moisture. Oh. And we're going to reduce the wine. Mm -hmm. Correct? That's correct. It's okay, that's enough. Okay, just a little bit. After wine comes a rich seafood broth. And straight from Spain, paella spices. This is the paella uh, condiments that uh, Martha brought for us. It's from Spain, so this stuff has got to be good stuff. So just kind of move, move it around. And use some saffron. Can you sprinkle some saffron on there, Martha? Yes. Saffron is added to enhance both the color and the flavor of a dish. So Chef Martha is being very generous in making sure that both color and flavor of the dish are there. This dish is known for its rich golden color, which is further enhanced by adding some smoked, smoked paprika. Smoked paprika, right? To bring some of that smoky flavor. Correct. And our chef Martha, she is adding extra saffron to she our dish. She is on it. She's so on it. So we are going all the way. Nothing is being spared tonight. This is going to be an amazing dish. Okay, Martha, you want to get your sangria for me, Sally? Sit on there like that. Okay. Three, three. Let's see what you're doing, Chef. So you're going to just now incorporate all the seafood yep. randomly and just kind of arrange it in a dishes, right? Correct. Very good. Okay. That's exactly what we're doing right now. And here's a Mrs. Birdman. Just, who just opening the, the fourth <laughs> bottle of wine. Now we're going to the main star and the main recipe of the show. So I'm here with my neighbor Joe and not just that he is the best neighbor ever, he also happens to be an amazing baker and amazing chef. Our neighborhood knows him for his pastries and one of the best things that he makes is his cheesecake. So we want to see how this is done so you can share this with everybody else so the mystery and the secret is finally out. Okay, we originally start with just a, a basic crust in a spring form pan, two cups of graham cracker crumbs, one stick of butter, and a half a cup of brown sugar. That is just mixed together, put into the bottom of a pan, put in the oven at 375, and cook for about 8 to 10 minutes. I'm just taking the softened cream cheese and adding it to a, a mixing bowl. So this is a, a room temperature cream cheese. Room temperature. Okay. And we're, we need two packages. And we're making the filling. Now I'm going to crack four eggs, but they're going to be separated. I'm going to add the yolks to the cream cheese, and I'm going to put the whites in a separate bowl. I have to tell you that um, Mr. Erdman is 75 years young and um, he is the main cook in our neighborhood. His table and his kitchen see the most action in a whole town. I'm gonna add a teaspoon of vanilla. A teaspoon of vanilla? Oh, can we add more? Or sure. Is it a little bit more. more, just a little Why bit. not? Okay. And? Three quarters of a cup of sugar. Very good, okay. Make sure you beat it a good three or four minutes. So it has a nice even consistency. You might want to scrape the pan once or twice just to make sure everything's incorporated. Okay, using clean beaters you want to now whip the egg whites to very stiff peaks. For whatever reason, Mr. Erdman tends to be very serious when he works, and uh, in reality, he's not this serious <laughs> at all. <laughs> I actually prefer to beat the egg whites a little in excess rather than too little, okay. um, so that they're nice and 
Nice firm, and firm. Nice, nice and firm. So is, isn't this the secret to the fluffiness of your cheesecake? Well, it is. It's the, the egg whites separate from the yolks. So that's going to fluff up the texture even more. So I'm going to very carefully fold these in maybe in two or three different. So you don't add all at once? No, I, okay. I usually just fold in a little bit. Just gently fold them and then just place into the pre-baked uh, spring form pan. Before becoming a famous baker, Mr. Erdman was a well-known dentist. Today, he invests his time in helping others, growing his vineyard, collecting beautiful art, traveling the world, and preserving American tradition. Okay, then it's just placed into a 375 degree oven for approximately 20-22 minutes. cheesecake in an oven, it's time to go and check on our chef David and Martha and our paella making. Okay. Now, do you, I do? you grab these with a the hand? <coughs> yeah, thank you. Exactly what I was thinking. I feel like that's what, when they open up, they're going to be like this. Now we add assortment of seafood special friend. Her name's Wendy. Hi Wendy, how are you? Nice to meet you. And um... David is the paella maker. I see that. I'll stir this up a little bit. Yeah. Why don't you give me one of those uh, crystal glasses? Right now. Chef David has its own way of arranging seafood to make paella look appetizing and inviting. This is obviously his way of doing it, but keep in mind that you have a freedom to arrange the seafood to your liking and perhaps include or start cooking the bigger pieces first to make sure that everything cooks thoroughly. We're going to need some um, foil paper. A foil thing and get a chance. Está oliendo un poquito quemado. Está muy quemado. I have the foil right there. What's left are final touches, which will bring more flavor to the dish and make it look like a piece of art. And this is a part where you can get really creative. Okay, so whose wine glasses are made in front of here? Um, Red peppers stand out beautifully on this golden color and now we're adding some asparagus to bring even more vivid colors to the dish and to add more vegetables to it. Okay, but there's more and as you can see now uh, Martha and David are adding some fresh parsley. This is for the decoration but it's also very much for the flavor. Finally, the last ingredient. Martha is adding some of these beautiful green pearls, or better known as a frozen piece. After this, dishes are tightly covered with foil to make sure all the ingredients are evenly cooked. David is the, David's the paella maker tonight. He's the paella man. Yeah, With dinner almost done, it was time to relax and catch up with the friends. I have to decide who's going to eat at the children's table. I'm going to be here. Another star tonight was Martha's fresh sangria, and I wanted to know how did she make it. You put a I mean, I try to do everything with natural ingredients. So I do all of the orange juice. I don't get the orange juice. I mean, I, I squeeze it and I get, uh, I mean, I do the cinnamon with the sugar and orange juice uh, to boil first, to do the base, and then I cut all the fruits and I take orange juice, lemon, and then uh, the wine, and then fresh 
lemonade. And then at the end, you can put a little bit either of champagne or prosecco or anything that has bubbles to make it a little bit more, you know, sparkling. Salute. <laughs> Dave came over, Dave went shopping with me, we bought everything, and he offered to do this whole evening for us. So, here's to Dave. Cheers to Dave. Oh, God, no. Salud, 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 Paella is simmering nicely and while this is cooking, we're going back to finish that cheesecake we started earlier with Mr. Joe. Once baked, let the cheesecake cool for about an hour. We're going to start preparing the topping we'll, that will not be added to the cheesecake until the cheesecake has cooled for approximately a good hour. You have to be very, very careful adding the, the sour cream over the top or you will break the, the surface of the cheesecake. So I'm just adding two cups of sour cream. I'm adding to that um, just about another half teaspoon of vanilla or a little bit more, whatever. Always a little bit more. Whatever you it can go prefer. wrong with extra vanilla. And I'm adding about two teaspoons of brown sugar to the sour cream. Yeah, I'm going to just make sure that that is well mixed. This recipe is basically a St. Louis style cheesecake. You can look it up just about in any cookbook and um, I think it will pop up something similar to this or very close to it. Okay, once the cheesecake has cooled for approximately an hour, um, we're going to gently sp spoon the sour cream on the top. You have to be very careful or you can break the surface of the cheesecake. So gently um, apply it. This is baked at 375 for approximately uh, 20 minutes. One of the main reasons why Mr. Joe's dishes always taste so good is because he's a perfectionist. But that's something he will never admit. Okay, I'm going to, now that I put the sour cream on the top, I'm going to just put it back in the oven at 375 for an additional 20 minutes. While the cheesecake is getting its second layer baked in, we're going to talk about the final topping. I usually use two tablespoons of sugar. Okay. Three tablespoons of sugar for two cups of berries. Okay. So in this case, I used uh, six three, three times as much. Three times as much. Okay, it's it's excellent. Not just on a cheesecake, but it's also very good on pancakes or any other desserts. And with that said, I think we have to try this. Mm, very good. And now we are ready to sit down and dine. In times when busy lifestyles, technology and media are doing their share to disconnect family, friends and communities, it is wonderful to know that there are people still out there who are willing to go extra mile to bring everybody back to dining table. Through cooking for our neighbors and sharing meals together, we are acknowledging our blessings. And this is also a wonderful way to tell our neighbors how much they mean to us. Like everything in the world, societies are evolving too. Today, more than ever before, it's important to reconnect with people around you and with your neighbors. My biggest passion and mission in life is bringing people together. This passion made me start a charitable organization 10 years ago called Vladis Seeds of Life. Our mission is to help reconnect families and communities in America. I want to thank my sous chef, Martha. 
Martha is a wonderful lady and a wonderful friend. And a good sous chef. And yes. I want to thank all my other friends just for being here, okay? Here, here. Thank you. Thank you for bringing us together, Mr. Joe. Cheers. Truth be told, this is the one that Martha Even made, so this is the one that she made. <laughs> Both food and the company were simply wonderful. And after enjoying Mr. Joe's amazing cheesecake, it was time to say goodnight. So here it goes to this wonderful country of ours and its amazing people. And moments like these, when we all gather together to share a meal, regardless of our political opinions and regardless of who our president is, we are America. And what makes America are people like these. So thank you all for watching. And if you like what we're doing here tonight, call your neighbors in, celebrate what we have. So cheers to everybody. Cheers. 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 And just as you think it's time to finish this episode, we came back only two weeks after making this dinner to make another paella that will be twice as big and twice as good. This time, we got the equipment straight from Spain. So as if the last paella was not enough, we are all back today to make it twice as big and twice as good. This is the paella redemption. Not the rain nor the cold weather could stop us. If anything, it made it more interesting to bring the kitchen to the garage. And this time, we had two experts who were working on this paella. I wasn't sure how could you improve already an amazing paella we made it last time, but apparently, proper dish makes a huge difference. And this time we were doing half meat, half seafood. Okay, so let's see what the chefs have been messing with. Mm, this is perfect. You happy with what you got? Yep. I like it. Good I way. think it's time to unfold it maybe. So what do you think? Mm. Yeah, it is, it's getting a little it's getting a little too puffy. So hold on, let me it's very, very, very good. It's bursting with flavor. Phones down, and it was time to give thanks once again. I would like to thank, you know, I'd like to thank you and David and everybody that participated, Martha and Vlada, and I'd like to thank some new friends, some old friends who just came to California to join us. And I'd like to thank this guy especially. He's, he's sort of a wonderful young man. And... Um, I just want to thank everybody for being here, and I want everybody to have a wonderful, wonderful evening. And thank you for hosting. Yeah. Cheers! Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Paella was amazing, but this time we had a better finish to our episode. Yeah. <laughs>